Hi everyone, today I want to show you something that is not my work. This is work done by Adam Harley. And I want to show it here because I think it's really interesting and helpful in understanding convolutional neuronal networks. It helped me a lot. And to check it out for yourself, the link to the project, the website is in the description and the link to the paper is also in the description. So let's get right into it. So here we are looking at the convolutional neuronal network. And what this network was trained and designed to do is to recognize handwritten numbers, the numbers between zero and nine. So what we can do here is in the top left, we have a pad where we can draw numbers. And the network is then supposed to tell us what kind of number we drew. So what we can do here, first we'll try the number three. And suddenly this network lights up and specifically the lowest layer here is the input layer. That's just the number we drew. And in the top layer, the, um, these nodes here tell us what's the best guess of the network. And we see right now the brightest node is the three. So that means the network correctly guessed that we, um, that I wrote the number three. So let's go through these layers one by one. As I already said below here, we have the input layer and that's just a downsampled version of what I drew here. And downsampling simply means you can tell what I drew here is very smooth. The input is not, not so smooth. It has less pixels. So the number of pixels is, re is reduced in the input layer we can click on each of those pixels here and it would, will tell us um, the number as input and output. And input and output here are equal because this is just the, la the first layer that the network is supposed to process. But what you can already recognize here is that the very um, cyan colored pixels have high values and the black pixels have low values. So darker pixels mean um, smaller values. Above the input layer, we have the first convolutional layer. And this convolutional layer has three images. And each of those images has um, the same number of pixels as the input layer. Now, what, what is this uh, convolutional layer doing? Convolution is simply a way of filtering. And filtering here means that one, one of these pixels in the convolutional layer, the value it's receiving from the input layer depends on many pixels in the um, input layer. And this is visualized here by those lines you can see. So as we go through each of those pixels in the convolutional layer, the lines tell us which pixels in the input layer will send their value to that pixel in the convolutional layer. And here we get into the first interesting thing because not all of the pixels in the input layer contribute equally to the input of this convolutional layer. They have different weights and the weights, as I also explained in a different video, the weights are what the network is training. As a network trains, it adjusts its weights. And this network adjusted its weights to correctly um, predict what, what number we drew. And looking at these different images here, one thing we can recognize is that they look quite different. So each of those images does a different thing. And what we can tell is they enhance different features. And mostly from looking at this, they enhance edges. So for example, in this, on the very left, this lower edge of the three has very high values. Yeah, in the input image, the three I drew has the highest value. Here, the actual three that was drawn has the lowest value, it's black. But the edge, this lower edge has a very high, has high, very high values. But the other images, they enhance different features. So this one seems to enhance the lower edges. So this edge here, this edge, and this other edge. Let's 
take a closer look at that. So these edges here are enhanced. For example, this one on the other hand enhances the edges here on the side. So these, these different um, images in the convolutional layer, they see different parts of what we drew. Then the next layer that we see further is a downsampling layer. The downsampling layer just reduces the number of pixels and it tells us here the calculation to do so is called max pooling. And max pooling simply means that each of these pixels in the downsampling layer receives values from four of the um, pixels in the previous layer as we see here, these are four connections. And the value it gets is just the maximum. The maximum value that uh, either of those four pixels had. And this is just a way to maintain information, but reduce the number of pixels. And by the way, the value this layer is getting depends on the output from the convolutional layer. And the output is not perfectly equal to the um, input, but it's calculated with the tan h function. Now we have another convolutional layer above our downsampling layer. And because we have less pixels now and we keep convolving the images, it becomes less clear what we actually drew. But this is what the, what the network is actually seeing, so to speak from what we drew. And this convolutional layer works similar to the previous convolutional layer, but it receives input from more than one picture. The first convolutional layer only received input from the uh, input layer. But this one, as you can see, connects to different, different images. It, all of them connect to four of the uh, images in the lower downsampling layer. This second convolutional layer, we have another downsampling layer. And then we get into what is called the fully connected layer. And in this fully connected layer, we don't really talk about pixels anymore. We talk about neurons or units or nodes. These, each one of these guys here, this one connects to all the pixels in the lower layer, all of them. But again, what is different are the weights. So each of those pixels in the lower layer will contribute with different weights. After this fully connected layer, we have one more fully connected layer. And then finally, the output layer is also fully connected to the lower layer. So I think this is really cool. Great work by Adam Harley. And you can just go to this website and play around with it. It works pretty nicely. There were some numbers I remember that it didn't really recognize very well. I think that was the seven, which it always confuses with a one. No, this time it worked. So all the numbers seem to work perfectly. Oh, the nine. Nine if things I drew a three. Let's see if we can somehow, now it's a nine. I just drew it badly. So this is really cool and I hope you'll check this out. And I hope to see you in the next video. See you then.